Most people get an MBA for one reason and one reason alone, to make more money. They've been told that an MBA opens the door to better and higher paying jobs, gives them access to bigger networks, connections, and opportunities. And that getting an MBA will teach them valuable business skills that you just can't learn anywhere else. But what if none of that is true? And that there's actually a much better, faster, and far more profitable alternative to getting an MBA that the big schools don't want you to know about. One that can help you earn 10 times more than your average MBA grad and all without sacrificing years of your life studying outdated textbooks and taking on a crippling level of student loan debt. Sounds good, doesn't it? That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you why getting an MBA is not only useless for business success, but how it may very well be one of the worst financial decisions that you can make in your life. And I'll unpack the unconventional but incredibly profitable path that I took instead, one that allowed me to become a multimillionaire and retire in my 30s. Most important of all though, later on in this video, I'm gonna give you the actions that you can take so you can do this too, no matter where you are right now, where you're starting from, or how big your goals are. Because full disclosure here, I'm a pretty normal guy. I just happened to stumble across a very unnormal path and then chose to take it all the way to the end. As Naval Ravikant said, anyone can be rich. It's merely a question of education and desire. So if you've got the desire, then let me unpack all this for you now, starting with just how bad an investment getting an MBA really is. Most MBA programs are two years long and require either a four-year bachelor's degree to apply or 10 to 15 years of relevant professional experience. This is Harvard, and this is the price of a two-year MBA program. $81,374 per year, which works out to $162,748 for the two-year program. And this, this is Yale. <laughs> this is their cost, $82,700 per year, which works out to $165,400 for their two-year MBA. And Stanford's, $76,950 per year, so $153,900 for their two-year program. And here's one from Cambridge University, £64,000 per year, which works out to about $81,450 US dollars depending on the exchange rate, and that makes it cost about $162,900 for their two-year MBA program. It's a lot of numbers, so for easy math, let's just say on average, it's about $160,000 US dollars to get an MBA from a top Ivy League school. But we're not done yet, because next we need to add the four years and $90,000 a year price tag for a four year bachelor's degree. So there's another $360,000, bringing our total costs to around $520,000. But don't worry, it gets worse. Because unless you trust fund babied your way into this, you're probably gonna need some student loans to pay for all this. And with the average student loan interest rate coming in at 5.8%, that means you're gonna need to pay out a total of $5,721 a month, every month, for the next 10 years. But here's where things get really interesting and where an MBA really starts to look like a terrible decision. We already know that the big appeal of an MBA is the claim that it's going to help you make more money. And if we look at a chart of MBA salaries across their careers, I'll admit the numbers do look pretty appealing. I mean, averaging these out between men and women, it looks like you can safely expect to earn just under $140,000 a year for your first couple years. Then it jumps to 160, then 108, then 210. A good salary for sure, and one that puts you in the top 4% earners in the US, meaning that you're now earning more than 96% of other people. But this isn't exactly passive income we're talking about. I mean, the average business consultant can expect to work between 60 to 80 hours a week or more, and the average investment banker 60 to 100 hours a week or more. There's a funny saying in that world that says, if you don't show up on Saturday, don't bother coming back on Sunday. That said, we can work out the average total career earnings of an MBA grad just by adding up the average MBA salary over a 40 year period and subtracting the total cost of education. And when you do this, you get a total career earnings of $7,784,838. Not bad at all, but if making money is the goal, then you might be surprised to hear that there's a much easier way to make a whole lot more of it. Like a much easier way where you basically do nothing at all and still make millions of dollars more. You see, if you were to take the original lump sum of cash required to get a four year bachelor's degree and then a two year MBA, $520,000, and simply invested it in a low cost index fund that mirrors the performance of the S&P 500, a strategy I might add that billionaire and investing legend Warren Buffett has long recommended to investors, and then just left it alone for the same 40 years until retirement age, you'd end up with $12,622,160 at 8% interest, or $27,900,000 
$924,344 at 10% interest. But instead of working 60 to 100 hours a week, all you had to do was just sit there and wait. Of course, most of us aren't starting out with $520,000 to just go out there and invest, which is what makes this next part of the video so incredibly important. Because it's here that I'm going to unpack what I did instead of getting an MBA and give you the tools and strategies so you can do the same. It's a cool idea to think that going to a prestigious school is somehow going to get you access to privileged information, secret business and money-making strategies, and knowledge that can't be found anywhere else in the world. But the fact is, everything you want to learn is already widely available for free or very inexpensive. Or as Matt Damon famously said in the movie Goodwill Hunting, you wasted $150,000 on an education you could have got for a buck 50 in late charges at the public library. And if you don't know where to start or what to learn first, then you'll be happy to know that most MBAs publish their curriculum online. So all you need to do is scan through the required courses and then pick and choose the ones that you think will be most valuable to you. For example, looking through the Cambridge MBA, I can see there's a course on microeconomics and clicking into it shows that the focus is on the parts of microeconomics that are especially relevant to management. Perfect, so now all we need to do is head over to Google, type in something like microeconomics for management, and I've got a whole list of books and videos and resources to choose from. The microeconomics for managers book seems to keep coming up and looks like there's links to it from Princeton and Stanford, Wharton and Cornell, so it's probably a pretty safe bet. And it looks like you can get this on Amazon for $47.99 if you want the hardcover version or as low as $12.36 on the Kindle. And just like that, we've already got access to MBA quality material for a fraction of the cost. Side note here, but another book I read is called The Personal MBA, and it's a useful tool that gives you a high level overview of some of the most important business principles and strategies that are taught in an MBA program. So clearly getting access to MBA level information isn't an obstacle, so we can safely check the knowledge component of the MBA off the list. But what about developing those real-world skills that you're supposed to have that many of the top employers are looking for when hiring an MBA? Things like strategic thinking, communication, versatility, ability to navigate technological disruption, and leadership. Navigate technological disruption. They're making that sound way more fancy than it is. Well, my friend, the traditional MBA approach to this is through the use of case studies. Real life business situations or hypothetical business scenarios used in MBA courses to facilitate some elements of experiential learning. Basically, you get to play pretend business where the stakes are low and the consequences of failure are at most getting a C minus on your paper. So one option to just replicate this on your own is to just download a bunch of case studies online and work through them at your own pace. Easy to do thanks to sites like Boston University's library, which gives open access to a ton of case studies right here on their website. And this LinkedIn article covers 20 famous case studies that every MBA student ought to know. But whoa, talk about boring. And definitely debatable how useful going through all of these case studies is actually going to be. Fortunately for us, there is a better plan. And one that will also help you check off the third box that an MBA claims to deliver, access to a powerful network. So let me walk you through that now. It's been said that your network determines your net worth, or in other words, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Or in other words, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Three cliche but incredibly true statements that are all basically saying the same thing. If you want to be successful, then you need to hang around other successful people. Growing up in a small town where the richest person I knew was a doctor with two ex-wives, child support payments, and a string of bad financial decisions behind him meant I wasn't exactly exposed to the lifestyles of the rich and famous from a young age. But I knew that getting around other successful people was important, so I moved to a bigger city. I worked like crazy to get a job surrounded by at first millionaires and then billionaires. And slowly but surely, I started adopting some of their attitudes and mindsets and beliefs, and then unsurprisingly, their results. This was years ago though, and thanks to an ever-increasing global economy and access to the internet, not to mention cheaper travel costs than ever before, there's basically no excuse to not surround yourself with people that you want to be like and people that you want to learn from. If you can afford to hire them as coaches or mentors, great, do that. If not, see if they have a course you can take, or a membership, or a community you can join. Can't do that? Well, do they have a book you can buy? A podcast you can listen to? A YouTube channel you can subscribe to? 
any step is better than nothing. So start where you are with what you have and just keep building from there. Of everything I shared with you here though, the most valuable and profitable skill that I ever learned, and the one that made me more money than anything else, was mastering the art and science of marketing, which allows you to grow any business that you apply it to. So to help you do that, I've linked up a video right here with some of my best marketing strategies, tips, tricks, and tactics. So make sure to tap or click that now, and I'll see you in there in just a second.